All right, I'm back. Mike in the house. What's up with y'all? I'm gonna show y'all how I made this wire to be able to read the codes on my 95 Caprice, or it's a 79, but it's got the 95 Impala Caprice LT1 in it. It's starting to rain out here, but I'll try to do this. So this right here, this part right here is a mini USB to a USB. That connects your computer or your laptop because you're gonna need uh, some, you're gonna need to connect to your OBD port. So this will connect to this little adapter, and I'll show you guys this in a second on the internet. This is really cheap. You can get them for like a couple bucks. It's a serial adapter or something. I forget the exact name of it, right? Okay. Then you don't even have to order these jumper wires. I did just because they fit on there nice. Had the nice little end. It's really cheap. I ordered like 40 of these wires right here. It's like a couple bucks. Right? Okay. So the ground goes on the ground. And then this one's an RX and a TX line. Those two go together, right? I mean, they go on there and then over here they go together. So you wouldn't really need this much line like I have because I was running it from my house because my laptop wasn't working because I, I don't think I had a, uh, the right program on there to read it because I was like, it was like old or something. It was like Windows, it was like Windows Vista or something old. So I was able to use uh, Windows 7 on the computer I got and you should be able to do 10 and 8 and maybe some other stuff, but it wasn't reading. My computer was having trouble reading this adapter card um, all my laptops wouldn't read it and my desktop with Windows 7 it did read it but I had to I had to re uh, I had to keep putting in the new drivers for this card and you can get those for free all the programs and stuff you can get for free on the internet so these oh anyway so the ground when you don't want to put it to like a clip like this or something that's what I put it to I'll put it I put each one of these to one of these so then I just had two lines I was dealing with. Then you're going to want to put those. They don't have to be that long, though. You're going to want to put these you want to put these two in and this one into the OBD. Let me see. So you might have an OBD2. You just find a probably similar, but this is for the OBD1. So you would want to use the top one is, um, I can't read it right now. I think it's A and M. A is the, is the ground on top. So you put the ground to the ground. And then on the bottom to that serial data line, which is tan on this car, it's the M port. So you want to put the top one on the A, ground to ground. So ground to A. And the other two, the RX and the TX, the ones that you put together, you can put those to the M. And if this was OBD2 that you were doing, a OBD port, two port, um, it would probably be pretty similar. You just gotta find the data line and the ground. And I think there might be more than one ground and maybe something else you gotta hook up, I'm not quite sure. But this is for one that has the OBD1 port. Because this was an in-between year 94 95 was the in between year for the their transition year going from 96 became obd2 and so there's nothing that reads codes for the 94 95 um not the little code reader i was about to show you guys a little code reader you guys know it it plugs in though and also you can do the paper clip method and the, the check engine light should blink but not on the 94 95 not if it's one of those in between years there's really no way to read the codes and so this is how I had to read the codes unless you buy a super like expensive uh, code reader. This is how you got to do it. And there's a guy, his name's Gary. I think it's Gary Doug. He made 9495, uh, scan 9495, a program that you could use to scan the these cars. And it's beautiful because this actually can give you your check engine codes and tell you a whole bunch of stats on how your car is running and specs and all give you all numbers and stuff so so yeah that's it right here a mini usb to usb i already had that cord but if you had to buy one it probably wouldn't be more than ten dollars or something on the internet 
So mini a USB to mini USB, then the serial adapter, and I'll put a link to it, or at least I'll put the name. I'll try to put a link to it. You know, links go bad sometimes, so I'll just try to put what it is. It's like a, I don't even want to guess off top. I'll, I'll just go straight to it. And then I got these jumper wires. You could just come with your own wires. You didn't have to buy these fancy ones. You know, you could solder it or connect it some other how, some other way, or just buy these connectors. But I like those connectors. And then you just click it. You just hook it into the M port and the A port. So that's how I did it, and I was able to read my codes. And here, let me show you guys. This is this is the serial adapter module right here. It's a FT. 232RL FTDI USB. It's a you can read it yourself 3.3 volts to 5.5 volts to TTL serial adapter module for Arduino. I think I said that right, mini port. So people use this for I forget what it was used for, whatever the Arduino is. It's like a phone or something. I don't even know a camera or something, but anyway. Here, this was a dollar shipping. And it was, I think I bought one for cheaper because I, I, you, if you buy this from like China or something, or you're down to weight, you can get it for like a dollar. If you buy more than one, you can get it cheap. But I'm saying it's like five dollars. This, this is the one I bought. I think I paid. I think I paid less than that. But anyway, there it is, right there. And all I know is what I did. I read up on it, how to do it. You just put the, you put the ground, and you put the RX and the TX, and you put them to the lines. A and M on the on your uh, port and it should work so there's that right there and then there's this right here about 40 of these for whatever so three dollars I could I have wires laying everywhere but I just wanted the correct ports and I cut off the other side you don't have to if you're on a laptop you might be able to just stick it into your USB and here let me see if I could find um, You could download all these scan uh, 9495 all these other things I have you could download all that so let me just show it open it up real quick it makes a noise like it's a LT one oh um, and, and then let me keep telling you all about okay you might have some problems like if you go this method I don't know how them wires work from like uh, like I don't know how those wires work from the companies that make them they're pretty much making the same wire they may make it a little different or with some options on it but you might even run into this problem anyway so my main problem with that wire is that i was having trouble reading it in computers and this is the only computer i get it to work on because i guess all my laptops were way too old and every time i plugged it in it was just like not recognizing it and i should probably where'd it go i should I should probably try to plug it in and see if it recognizes it. It's not, it's probably not going to. I always had, had to unplug it and plug it in a bunch of times. And I would find, that's a method I found is I don't even know if, uh, I was, well, I was updating the drivers for it. You know what I'm saying? I was updating the drivers, but we'll just see if it reads it. So I don't know if it's gotta be in a certain port or not. I forget that I don't think it does but what you do have to do look it's not gonna read it see it says not recognized but anyway you would go to the the device manager I guess I'll just keep going all out with how to do this so let's see device manager I forget if I know how to get there or not it's under control panels I think you might just be able to click device yeah you could just you could just start going for a device you could just start typing it into the search for programs thing so let's open up device manager there's my oh man. okay there it is and it should be showing up but it's not it's showing up as an unknown device so you'd have to go there you click on it right click it and I think I was uninstalling it and then I was updating driver software. I was disabling it. I was doing all types of stuff like that. But I definitely had to update the driver software. I believe that was like the main key was when I was doing that. And I would just plug it in and unplug it and plug it in. 
and eventually it would read it. I don't know if you would have this computer. I don't know if you would have this problem with yours, but I was. And I was reading all into it, and people were having problems with the with getting it to work. But I think some of the lines, like if you buy that reader from like Moats or someone, I think I don't think it's gonna do this, but it may. I'm, I'm not kidding even call it. So, but yeah, all this all this uh, stuff you can download, and yeah, I'll put it through that the dude named Gary uh, Gary Doug, this guy right here. If you look up scan 9495 or try to download that or download the whole packet of it, it'll have a bunch of stuff on it. And um, I don't have my car hooked up right now because like I'm saying, I was having trouble reading the USB port. But like, like I was saying with this, I would just keep plugging it in and unplugging it and making sure that you're doing, uh, you update the drivers on it for sure because I think that's what got mine working. And so I got the drivers right here. It was... I think that one's a newer one, but it was like this one, I think, is the one it wanted me to have. And I think you can either get that from uh, Arduino. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. But some but some of these chips that that are out there are like fake or something, too. So, like, if they get recognized as a fake, you got to go into the chip and then change a whole bunch of settings to get it back to normal. Luckily, mine didn't do that, but if you guys do have to scan a 94 or 95, you definitely probably want to find this dude right here, or at least the website where they posted all this info when they were coming up with it and then when they were putting it for download. Because you might have to, you want to read the instructions first. I mean, watching my videos good and other people's videos, that'll get you a long way. But the, my luckily, my chip didn't... Um, reset or something but it could have because i didn't i wasn't paying attention to anything i was just trying to get it to work and so there's that but also so when you do get it to work it's not just going to work you got to make sure you you put it on the right com port so this this could get if if your computer is just not showing it like when i plug mine in and it find and that and my computer finally read that chip right there it was it was giving me options to put it on com port six or three or something and then you have to, on the other programs like um, Cat's Wind Flash. Here, I'll, I'll turn that away. Oh, it says. Anyway, there's Cat's Wind Flash down there. You can um, download that program too. That's a good one. And you could just re download it after 30 days. But this is for just scanning. So I don't have it hooked up right now, so I can't scan. But what you would do is just turn this on. Your computer's all hooked up. You would find the right port and if it's all reading you should be able to click scan it's going to run a scan it'll run for as long as you want it to after that you can like save it or you can put the auto save and i have some footage of it on my computer working so i might upload that as well onto this video but i'm not sure if i want to do any editing so i might just leave this one but this is pretty much it right here you know you can go through all this stuff so yeah, I built that wire for ten dollars or less, but I already had uh, the USB mini USB. But you might have something like that too, or you might even have a serial port laying around, or know where those come from. You might be able to take stuff out of a computer and make your own. I have no idea. But that was it right there. Let me re-show you guys this right here. So you don't have to buy it from this person because they're not hooking me up at all. But you know, I did buy it from them and it did work and everything was good but there's a lot of sellers out here selling these so that would be it right there that why this with a mini usb with some jumper cables to the to the obd port and then run scan 94 95 and you should be able to be able to scan your codes and so that's it that's crazy that you got to do that much or you got to get some technological scanner up super whatever that can do everything. They just didn't scan for 94.95. So shout out to that Gary Doug dude who made that program that really helped me. I was able to run my codes and I saw it was nothing serious, but at least I got to see it. So there it is. I hope that helps you guys. I'm sure it probably will. So I did that research. Other people got this research out there, but there weren't videos just like this or um you know it was like websites you were having to 
there was a lot of different stuff, but this is a method that worked for me. So I'm just putting what worked for me. Finally, I was able to scan my car. So there it is, you guys. All right, cool. See you guys later. Peace. All right, I'm going to use scan 9495. This is for the Firebird Caprice Impala LT1. You can get this on the internet. And make sure you're on the right com port. That might be, you might have fun setting that up on your own, but I'll just get to the car part right here. So let me go outside and turn it on because I have the wires run from inside here because none of my None of my laptops were reading this serial adapter I bought, but that's another story. It's reading right now on my desktop, so I'm just gonna do what I can. So now I can scan the car. If it's connected, we'll see. connected so that's what it's reading right now and no trouble codes because I disconnected it so I kind of want to see what happens when I start the car usually you would probably be in the car in a laptop but right now I'm not so we're just gonna do it like this real quick. Hopefully it starts. Just wanna get some type of idea here. You get a scan. Yeah, you can see. Oh, there go my trouble codes. 